Uh, today we talk about uh, the rest of chapter 3. Uh, I don't think we're going to finish chapter 3. So chapter 3 will be finished on Wednesday. Uh, and then starting from next week, we're going to start chapter 4. After next week, that's going to be reading week. And then after that, you have your midterm. And, the, and then you're going to have your pre... So for those who are already allowed to have a makeup lab, on the week of the midterm, they're allowed to do so. After that week, we're going to start with a new set of labs. So that's the, the agenda for now. Um, and as you, I'm sure all, all, you, all of you know, after this we have lab C for section 01. All right, so we reached up to the point that uh, we talked about the addition, multiplication, subtraction, and division. But all of them were for integers, right? Integer values are pretty uh, easy, let's say easier to calculate than the rest of the um, real world calculations. Uh, I mean, we would love to deal with integers only, but the issue is in most of the scientific applications, we are stuck with the, the floating point, which we're going to discuss today. And they're going to... Um, they're going to raise all sorts of uh, issues about computations and um, so on and so forth, which we, we, we touch a little bit. But you get the idea um, after this course that, uh, you know, even for a small matrix multiplication, what are the steps needs to be taken in order to do so. So, and later on when you learned about machine learning algorithms, AI, and so on and so forth, you see that how many how many calculations how many computations are getting executed by just you know one smile detection on your phone or um, your face detection or I don't know when you are using your camera that is a smile detector what are the processes behind so all of them are starting from you know um, scientific calculation and the base of all of those are floating point numbers okay so I'm sure you've all heard about floating point. When you are in a scientific word, instead of writing um, a value such as this, right, we can represent it in either a normalized or non-normalized way in a floating point manner. So the name comes from its uh, function, right? The base can float. So I can either write it 1.2345 and the rest of those zeros, right? So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Or I can just change this to 12 and then reduce this to 6 or change it to 5 and reduce it to, I don't know, to, to 5 here. So this thing, the base, can float and that's why we call this floating points. In C, they call, uh, you can initialize variables using a float. Um, a structure and that's um, what was the origin of the floating point okay so in general we have two classes of floating points here you can see as normalized or not normalized so if you basically have no leading zeros after your only uh, base so in this case you have only two right no zeros and it's only one digit, so we call it, we're going to call it normalized. On the other cases, these are not normalized floating points. Okay. So as you can see, these are in decimal, so you have the you have from zero to nine. In binary, we can represent floating points as such. So the first one represents the sign. This minus and plus, and that's your base. And I'll explain in a moment what are these about, okay? As you can see, uh, the advantage of uh, having uh, floating points is that it's going to simplify the rep representation of big numbers, right? So this, for instance, has 56 zeros, leading zeros here. If we were to, if we were to just present it in a, in a normal way, we would have overflown already because it's decimal, right? And the other way is, uh, the other advantage is 
in many cases, it's going to increase the accuracy of the numbers that are stored in a word. Um, in general, we have four different conventions. In risk 5 we're going to learn about <coughs> two of those. So if we have only 8 bits to represent floating points, we're going to call them half precision. Here in this course, we're going to learn about single precision and double precision, which are, I'm sorry, 16, if you have 16 bits only. So for 32 and 64, so this is double precision, and this is single precision. We have a 128 version of that, it's the quant one, and it's so either uh, the half precision and the quant one is outside the scope of the course. So we are mostly focused on 32 bits and 64 uh, bits. So either single or double precisions. So that definition stems from IEEE standard uh, standardization in late 80s, I believe. And they have defined that single precision or 32-bit representation of floating point or double precision, which requires 64-bit to represent. All right? So as you, as you might uh, guess, it's going to increase the portability issue for scientific code, which we all know that um, either we are dealing with a very, very small numbers or very, very large numbers, right? <clears throat> okay, so that, that's the format. If we use a single precision, we're going to have 8 bits for our exponent, right, which is this. If we use a double precision, we're going to have 11 bits for that. The first one is a sine bit, right? Plus or minus 1. So depending on the single or being a single or double precision, we have 8 or 11 bits. And again, depending on having a single, or uh, single precision or double precision, we're going to have either 23 bits for the fraction part or 52 bits for the fraction part. I'll, I'll explain with a few examples. And you're going to, uh, soon you're going to see that it's pretty easy to convert back and forth from a normal uh, representation to a FP representation, okay? So I mentioned that this is representing uh, two classes, like 0 and 1, or plus and minus, right? So the sign bit could be either 0 or 1 for negative and non-negative, right? In a normalized... Now, if you go back to the binary word, so in a normalized way, that significant part can be float uh, between 1 and 2, right? And then uh, we need to have bias in order to compute that uh, exponent side because for both cases, for the single precision, we need to deduct 127 from the exponent. And for a double precision, we need to divide uh, we need to deduct 12 or 3 from the, the precision. I'll, I'll explain all of them in, in a second. What is it? 1023? Let me double check. Yeah, perhaps you're right. Let me see. Let me double check here. <clears throat> so, yeah, right. Good call. Okay, I'll upload the slide actually after the course, so I've already uh, edited all those typos, okay? So now let's go back and see, okay, how are we going to represent the smallest and the largest value 
using a single precision range. You soon realize that uh, when you use this convention, right? One minus uh, raised to the s, one plus fraction multiplied to the raised of exponent minus bias, right? You soon realize that we're going to have either there are two possibilities to have all zeros or all ones. And these two are actually reserved. In single precision range, the smallest value we can represent is going to be with the exponent of all zeros, the last one, one, right? So the actual exponent, if you compute it after deducting bias, because here, for single precision, we're going to uh, deduct it at minus 127. And for the double, as your colleague uh, mentioned, is 1023, right? So the smallest number you can represent here, the actual exponent would be 1 minus 127, which is minus 126. And if you compute that, it's going to be in, in the base of 2. This would be the, the smallest number we can represent by a floating point, right? In the base 10. So you can easily see that if, if we were to use the normal version of a decimal word, uh, a decimal number, there was no way that we could have represented this very, very small number. Right? On the other side, if you go to the plus domain, the largest value, excluding this, which was reserved, is going to be all 1 except the last one, the, the, the least significant bit. So the actual exponent, if you compute it again, minus 127, it's going to be plus 127. Okay? And then the value would become 3.4 multiply 10 to the raise of 38. And this is just for the single precision range. If you go double, which you'll see in the next slide, there is a much, much higher flexibility in order to play around with the numbers. Okay? So here by, by the word significant, where was it? Yeah. We normally mean uh, a digit, right? Or, a di or digits that carry... The, the largest contribution to a floating point. For instance, if you have if you have this number like right, oh no, these are zero. So this tree could be significant. Because you can play around with those ten to the raise of an exponent and play around with those, but these are the ones that you need to represent them. For instance, like this, or like this, okay? If you have only one digit, it's even better. So say you had uh, 5, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, right? This would be only significant because the rest would have been presented easy, right? 10 to raise of 6. So these are different definitions um, that we use here. Um, okay, so just like a single precision in double precision, now you're going to see because we have a wider range of bits for the exponent side, you see that, uh, we are allowed to represent way, way higher, larger and smaller uh, numbers, right? Minus 308 and plus 308. So this, um, in general, this representation standardized by IEEE uh, was essential in order to be able to compute the scientific range of word uh, and numbers by computers. Okay? All right. Now, let's see an example. How are we gonna, how are we gonna, uh, you know, convert back and forth numbers from decimal in order to a binary uh, floating point? Okay. Now, in this example, we are interested in uh, converting m minus 0.75 in the base of 10 to a binary. Okay. 
So first, what we need to do is <clears throat> we need to find a way to represent this in a fraction mode, right? Two values. So easily you can see that this value is actually minus 3 over 4, right? In base of 10. Even if you were asked to do such questions in exam, I make sure that these are pretty easy to compute, right? You don't need the calculator in order to play that. Uh, play around and fi find that. I make sure they are easy enough that, you know, they can be guessed. Otherwise, there are algorithms, as you know, how to, you know, to translate back and forth your, um, your no normal uh, numbers in, in, into a fraction-based number. All right, so now, we know that this value is equal to minus 3 over 4, okay? You can represent 4 as 2 to the raise of 2 in base 10. So now we have minus 3 over 2 to the raise of 2 in base of 10. Now, because you have this in the denominator, if you bring it up, just like when we had 10 minus 2, then plus 2 in the denominator, right? When you bring it up, it's going to be minus 10 minus 2. And then if you had like 4, 45 multiply that, it would be equal to like 4.5 to raise of minus 1, right? So it would just affect your base, okay? So just like that, we start by bringing this up and deduct it from the, the base. So this would become... Instead of minus 11 to the, uh, to the base of 2, it's going to be minus 0 dot 11 in the base of 2. Okay? Is it clear? Here it is. Is it clear why we arrived to this point? So we have, we have changed this to 3 over 4, and then that would become 3 over 2 to the raise of 2, and then this would become 11, so minus 11, 2, then we affected this, so it became, right? Does that make sense? Just read until the second line. Don't go further. Yeah. Does anyone know? Three in binary. Okay. I don't know how you got the denominator. What is it? I don't know how you got the denominator. So you 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 recall when you have like twenty five divided by ten to the raise of two yeah. as denominator, right? So when you bring it up, what's gonna happen to this? It's going to be 10 to the raise of minus 2, right? Yeah. And then when you affect it to this, it's going to be O dot 25 now. No, the point is, how do you get 10 to the power of 2? Because so, th that, was, that was 2 to the raise of 2, which was 4, right? Yeah. So in the decimal word, that, 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 that's going to act as your 10, right? Got it? So we have to just make sure, we have to make sure that we represent our numbers in an, in an order of 2, right? The exponent of 2. That 4 became 2 to the raise of 2 is as if in, in decimal you have 10 to the raise of 2. So, what about uh, 2 to 2? Oh. See, we converted the 3 to 11. The denominator, where did it go? So, <coughs> when, it's, when it's in denominator, when you bring it up, it's going to invert the, the exponent <coughs> sign, right? So, it would make it minus, and you affect the minus to that binary. So instead of this, you have you would have this one, right? But this this is in decimal. In binary, you would just affect it and make it minus eleven. Uh, I'm sorry, <coughs> minus o dot eleven. Okay. Because two in binary is one zero. Exactly. Yeah. Is it clear now? We're slow, but we're fine. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So. 
we are at the point that we we know what's what's going to be the e so let me just remove this so now we know that minus o dot 75 in the base of 10 is equal to minus o dot 11 in the base of 2 okay we're here now we can represent it in a floating point version so just add at this multiply 2 to the raise of 0 right this is this is 1 so that doesn't change anything you just re change the representation right we have to make sure that we normalize it by normalization I mentioned that we have only one digit as a leading so that would become minus 1.1 1 .1 multiply 2 because we change we shift it on the right so it's gonna make it minus 1 is that clear up to now now we use the the IEEE standardization that I mentioned previous slide so that would make it uh, also in the next slide it's, it's readable so it's going to be minus 1 raised by 1 because the sign is negative and then we have 1 plus the rest of the zeros which we get rid of these, these are the, the allocation we had and then multiply 2 to the raise of this minus your base okay so actually you can see it better here I just want to make sure that you understand how did we arrive from here to this. <coughs> yeah. If we don't normalize, are we can achieve like smaller numbers in the minimum exponent and greater numbers in the maximum exponent. Yeah, but yeah, that's correct in general. But when you do arithmetic operations with floating point, you have to find a sort of a convention in order to align them, right? Yeah. So that alignment is you have to normalize them because you make sure that you have yeah, okay I mean at the end of the day all of these tricks are sort of a convention throughout time researchers came up with the idea that if we compute this way the hardware underneath can be done more efficiently perhaps there are other methods but if you change any of those you need to just change the full like, spectrum from the software side to the hardware side right so throughout time, this, this came out popular, it was used, and it has been optimized and optimized. So there are so many different versions of um, that IEEE standardization. So it's been used for like 40 years, and it's been working. Perhaps there are other methods? Sure. <clears throat> okay. So we arrive from here to this. So you can see that the S was 1. The fraction part is this. The exponent is 1 minus plus the bias. In a single precision, we can represent it as this because it's 27. On a double, is 1023. And we can represent it this way. Okay? So the output of this finally, in both single and double, would be this number. Right? We have S either 8 or 11 bits for the exponent or either 23 bits or 52 bits for the fraction side okay could be it's an easy one you wish <laughs> yeah. Is that clear? All right. You don't have to memorize anything. I mean, you don't have to memorize that 23 bits is for this, 52 is for that. Everything will be given. OK. Now, let's go the other way around. So in this case, what number is represented by a single precision float? such that, okay? So we are coming from a binary representation of a floating point to its equivalent uh, decimal, okay? So you just you go back this way, you have this, 
you know that the first one is a sine, so you have minus here. And then just like that, you add one plus fraction, right? So you add one. The fraction is 25, because this is 25. Is it clear? Why? <coughs> no? So, what's the issue? Do you know? Me? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's so yeah, like, it's like. Um, how, how do you If you think of it like, uh, like the first, the first two binaries is. Nah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, grass must go out here. So just like what we did in order to make it a fraction and then uh, generate two to the raise of something in order to come up with that, you have to just do the reverse, right? You remember here? Represented this as a fraction, a 3 to 4, and we make it to the raise of 2, right? So we have to just start from here and go back. Yeah. Okay? Now, if you start from this and go... So this was finally minus 11, okay? So assume this is 20, 0, 25. How are we going to go back? Can anyone suggest something? <laughs> so 10 uh, Divided by ten to the negative two. That's right, exactly. Good. Was that clear? Okay, so now we arrive to the point that we know we have this minus 1 and s. This is minus 1 to the raise of 1. It will output minus 1 because we, we wanted to have a minus here. This is 1 plus the fraction. The fraction turned out to be out of 25 and then the rest we know the bias depending on the precision you just have to compute the, the exponent an exponent was we knew that the exponent is either 8 bits or 11 bits right which is shown in green because it's a single precision right these are your exponents and the value for the exponent is 129 okay so this is 129 that was the bias. So finally, if you compute this, you're going to arrive to the point that so this value represents minus 5 in the base of 10. Okay? Again, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm explaining why we are doing all this hard work because at the end of the day, the computer only understands 0 and 1, right? The hardware only able to, to execute 0 and 1. So whatever we do, we have to just find a way to just make it 0 and 1. If you want to have other things, we have to <coughs> devise and come up with a new computer from scratch. Because the current computer is only working with 0 and 1. Unless you are doing a quantum uh, computing or a new computer using the quantum methods, which I'm not um, ever of any. This is the way you should, you know, translate everything into 0 and 1 finally. Okay. So using a floating point representation sometimes brings us some issues. We call those the normal numbers, okay? So in general, in an attempt to squeeze every bit of the, the, the precision from a floating point operation, um, the standards sometimes allow us to represent some numbers in 
um, sort of an unnormalized form, right? So rather than, have, rather than having a gap between zero and the smallest normalized number, right? Thus we call this number a denormalized numbers. So we can see examples here. So we have zero plus fraction and two to the raise of minus bias. So they have the same uh, exponent, right, as zero, but a non-zero fraction, okay? They allow, an, uh, they allow a number to degrade in significance until it becomes zero, okay? And we call this process a gradual underflow. So in general, overflow is referring to when you have your exponent um, exceeding the, the, the maximum allowed number for you, depending on your precision. And underflow is that when your exponent is the minus of the side, so the max minus of that precision. That's why we have on the other side overflow, on the other side underflow. So depending on the type of computer and the compiler used, sometimes uh, the, these systems will bring up an exception, right? Or sort of an interrupt to a computer. Uh, to, to your software being run. So depending on, again, how does uh, the exception was handled, your program will be interrupted. Okay, so these are some examples of that. Again, when we use floating point standard, we have to deal with the infinities and NANs. So NAN stands for not a number. Perhaps you, you've seen it by using, I don't know, MATLAB, uh, or Python packages. So, you have to deal with this type of um, situation. So, for instance, 0 over 0 is like in computer, in, in floating point number is, is a NAN, right? Um, or, for instance, here, instead of interrupting on a divide by 0, your software can just set the result to a bit pattern representing, I don't know, plus infinity. Or minus infinity, right? So at least your your program doesn't in, get doesn't get interrupted. Okay, you just see an infinity on the screen instead of seeing all those bunch of exceptions throwing out. Okay, so these are just some conventions that people use in order to avoid interrupts. Um, okay. Also for NAN, several. I mean, when you run some results, depending on how uh, how you arrive to NAN. You might be able to just fix it later. Um, so NAN also could be uh, could allow programmers to postpone some tests and decisions to a later time in a program when they are convenient, right? Okay. Now that we define how we convert back and forth from decimal to floating point, let's just today we're going to see um, the addition and multiplication of floating points. And then um, I'm going to stop after that. All right, so let's talk about floating point addition. It's pretty close to what we have in, in a previous lecture as the, the, the integer addition. But here we just have to make sure that we add every individual module of that with the base <coughs> and the exponent. So, and here's why we need to have it normalized. So you asked before, and so that's why. Okay, so. Consider we have to consider we have only four digit decimal example, okay? We confine ourselves with a four digit decimal. So those two are nine dot nine 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 multiply ten to the raise of one plus one six one zero multiply ten to the raise of minus one. Okay? So what we need to do is first align our decimal point. Okay. So we need to shift the number with a smaller exponent normally. So always you need to shift the one that has a smaller exponent to the one that is bigger. So in this case, we need to shift this one with a smaller exponent. So this will become this. And the first one, which was the bigger one, stays the same. So now we have to add 9 dot 999 multiply 10 to the raise of 1 plus 0 dot 0 16 multiply 10. Okay? 
Now, on the, on the second step, we need to add the significance. So these are the significance, right? That would be the result of these two. And finally, we need to normalize the result again. So this will become this, only one, and the rest would become a float after that. So 1.015 multiplied 10 to the raise of 2. Okay? And depending on the, the digits of allowance, in this case we had only 4, so we weren't able to represent it in 5, so we have to round it. And this rounding is the root of many causes when you play around with the floating point numbers. If you just go, if you had a computer that only accepts, in this case, a four digits, and it was accepting decimal points, and say you were like doing millions and millions of operations and computations, perhaps at the end, your results would just be far, far away from um, a computer that was accepting five digits, right? Because you were keep rounding and rounding, and this small um, loss that you had was propagating and be became more and more, okay? So that's why um, in many of the scientific domain computations, that a small rounds at the end might be costly. But this is the way it is, I mean, because we, uh, in this case, we didn't afford more than four digits, okay? All right. So that was for an addition of a floating point in decimal. But as you know, what actually happens is an addition of a floating point in binary, okay? All right. So let's have a look here. I mean, you have you have them in a slide here, but I just wanted to make sure you you get to know all the all the steps one by one. So that's why I put them here. Let me actually try to make it bigger. Okay, so now, let's see this example. We want to add these two points. The first one, this, and this, okay? So just like what we had before, we have to find a fraction out of this. So O.5 in 10 is easily can be computed as 1 over 2 in 10. That 2 could be defined as 2 to the raise of 1 in 10. And then when it, when it comes up, it's going to be 2 to the raise of minus 1. And since it's in binary, this is 1, 0, 1. This is, right? This is 0, 1. And when you multiply it to the 2 to the minus 1, it would become 0 that 1 in 2, OK? Are we good up until up until now? Then you represent it in a normal format, normalized format. So it's one, three zeros, and the, the multiply to the uh, raise of minus one. So that's the first number. This is <clears throat> this is it. The second one is a little bit more tricky. You don't need to just you know come up with that fraction, although there are algorithms for that. But assume that you knew. This value, 4375, is the, the, the output of the fraction of 7 divided by 16, okay? So when you know that, it would become minus 7 divided by, this 16 would be 2 to the raise of 4, and this would be equal to bringing, shifting right 4 digits of your output. 7 is 111. So when you shift it four times, because this is four, right, it would become minus 0 0.0111, okay? You make it normal, only one number, uh, on, only one digit here, right? So it would be minus 1 dot 1.110, multiply to the raise of minus 2. Okay, now we have these two values to add, okay? All right? All good so far?
just like what we did for the decimal version. Now we have to follow up the, the same algorithm. So we find the, the smaller one, okay, with a lesser exponent, which is this one, minus 1.11. One one one. This is a lesser exponent. And we shift it right until its exponent matches the larger number, right? So we have to match minus 2 to minus 1 because this is, this is the largest one. So when these two match, this minus 1.110 one becomes this, okay? Now we have two exponent matching here and here, right? Now we can add the significance because their exponents are matching. So when we add them, we have 1 dot zero 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 multiply 2 to the raise of minus 1 plus the second one, okay? Now let me just magnify the rest. So, now we just have to, after adding the significance, we have to just normalize the sum, okay? And checking for overflow or underflow, which in this case, it didn't happen because they were pretty small. So the final value would be one dot triple zeros multiplied to the raise of minus four, okay? We are in this range, so we're good. No underflow, no overflow. And the bias exponent would be minus 4 plus 127 in a single precision. And that would be this. However, we need to uh, round the sum, right? Just like what we did for the decimal point. So step 4, we need to round it. And the round of this is still that because that was only four. Okay, we didn't lose anything here. Because the sum already fits exactly in four bits, so there is no change in bit. Okay? All good for the addition, for the binary. So you just have to find two fractions of each decimal and then convert them to a floating uh, binary. And then after <coughs> that, you just have to find the, the one with the smaller exponent, align them, and then add them together. It would be pretty easy. So the example you saw is shown here, but at least you know how did those numbers you know, convert it, okay? So the output was the same as what we saw, okay? So if you want to see what hardware is required to do such addition, okay, soon you realize that it's actually much, much harder to, much more complex than um, an integer addition, right? So you need all those different modules. For, so this is your first number, and this is your second one. So that's your number one and number two. So each of the steps are shown. So starting from the top, um, this level with this small ALU is going to compute and compare the exponents of this and this. Here, okay. The output of this would be the exponent difference, and it's going to show us what's the the shifting level required, right? <coughs> so the difference controls the three multiple uh, multiplexer from left to right. They select the larger component, 
and the significant of, of this smaller number and also the significant of the larger number, okay? Now, the smaller significant was found, so it has to be shifted right. And we do it here. And then the significance are added together using the, the bigger ALU, right here. So we compared, we found a difference, we shift to the right, and then we are adding it up to the here. <coughs> then after the addition, we have to normalize and round, which are done here and here. So that's just a high-level schematic view of uh, what needs to be done inside the hardware in order to do uh, a floating point addition. Later on in this course, you, you'll, you'll play around with, with, with how to design such flows, and they're fun. Okay, now we know how to add. Let's talk about multiply. Okay. So, the task is we want to multiply, again, having four-digit decimal, right? We're going to multiply these two numbers, one that one, one zero, and one, uh, 10 to the raise of 10. Uh, multiply, so this is the first one. Multiply the second one, okay? So, how it goes is first we add the exponents. So for bias exponents, we subtract bias from the sum, right? So this would be the new exponent. <coughs> then we multiply the significance. So this part with this part. Then we have to, and this is the exponent of the results. That was the result of the multiplication, okay? Then we normalize it, make it only one after leading zeros on the float side. So 1.0212. That will become uh, this 5 to 6, and then we're going to round it if necessary. Okay, in this case, we didn't have space for this. So it's going to be rounded 1.021, OK? <clears throat> now, this was easy. Let's talk about the binary one. So just like before, let me just break it into different slides. So starting from here, so these are our two numbers. Let me make it even bigger here. Okay. So our two values are one that triple zeros multiplied to the raise of minus one by minus one 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 zero. Okay. So just like the, the decimal version, we have to add the exponents without bias. So here it was minus 1. Here is minus 2. So we add them, it's going to be minus 3. Or we can do this using the bias representation. It's single precision, so you have 128 here. So that's the final result. In this case, we had to just uh, compute it using the bias again, finally. That would be the same in both cases. Okay. So now, after we found the, the, the result the exponents, we need to multiply the, the values itself. You recall from the previous lecture how the multiplication of binary goes, right? We were shifting left. 
the, the, the partial products and shift right the second um, the second value, the second number. So what we have here is because this one has zero, the second number, right? Since this is zero, that makes a zero copy depending on the number of digits above. So zero, 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 zero. You shift left or this one is shifted right as well. So now we need to consider the one on a second digit. This is one, so you have a copy of above underneath. So you have one, zero, 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 right? That is for this. You shift left again, and this one is shifted right. You have again one, so another copy of the first value. So again, one, 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 zero. You have again one, so another copy with the shift of left. And then you have to just add them finally to get those values, okay? So the, the, the multiplication of these two are one, 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 and four zeros. Is that clear? All right. So after this, let me just magnify it a little bit. On a step three, We need to check the product and make sure it is normalized. And also check the exponent for overflow or underflow. Our exponent is minus 3, so we are pretty good within the range. Um, then finally, we just have to round it, OK? Actually, this, this was already rounded. So we just have to bring it here. And the signs of the original upper and different make the sign of the product negative. Okay, so this would be negative here, finally. And we can convert it back to decimal to, to see the, the values here. All right. Uh, just like the added complexity for the other, the, the floating point multiplier is, is going to be much, much more complex. And it, it won't be able to be, and we won't be able to, to run it uh, in, in a single cycle. So it's going to take several cycles normally. Um, I'm going to stop here. So you guys wind down a little bit. And yeah, see you fresh at 7 in the lab. OK?